I know you don't like swans. I never said that. Oh, okay. Hey everybody, this is Alan from OC Nerf with my wife, Heather. And we are going to be doing an unboxing and review of the uh, Rebel Charm Series Fair Fortune Blaster. So, this is a crossbow um, in the Charm line that uh, is a sub-line of the Nerf Rebel line. This is their Charm line. This is more of like a, if I were to describe it, like the fantasy, almost steampunky style. Like if you look at the graphics here of the uh, girl on the box, she's got like the goggles and everything. It's very like steampunky and the... Uh, and uh, fantasy, wouldn't you say? Like what she's got? Cool. So this is a uh, six dark revolving drum inside there, which will pop out. That goes to the blaster. Um, the blaster is not actually technically bow powered, it's actually string powered. So, so it's got these elastic bands that uh, go with it. <clears throat> um, I hardly ever see uh, the charm line anymore, so it was really cool that I was able to pick one of these up. I actually personally like the design that's on the uh, Charm series. This, a lot of the details they put in there actually look really cool. What do you think? It's very cute. <laughs> it's very cute. It comes with the blaster, of course. It comes with six darts, and it comes with a charmed bracelet uh, that that kind of goes. Uh, here we go. A charm bracelet that goes around the wrist or goes as like a handguard to the blaster. Um, we have the basic instructions here in the back, which are install it, put the darts in, pull the uh, slide back, and fire. So pretty straightforward. Um, there's a little bit of a text here that they have. Do you want to go ahead and read what it says there? Guard the world from dark forces that threaten it. Arm yourself with mystical weapons and enchanted charms to be the most powerful protector. Let the adventure begin. This claims ranges of about 75 feet or 22 meters, so this is claiming to be elite performance. The Fair Fortune comes with the Rebel Charm and the Fortune Charm, so there's different charms for each of the blasters in this line. Do they have additional charms that you can purchase? I don't uh, think so. I think you have to buy blasters. Like, you have to buy... Oh. Yeah, very, I know. very smart. Okay. Yeah, so you have to like buy a different one, like the Courage one has like the Courage charm. So each oh, kind of the like Captain Planet for Princess. Yeah. Heart. Militant Princess. Militant Princess. Weaponry. <laughs> right. So uh, that's all that we got for the box. It's an open face box, um, but no harm, no foul for an open face face box here. You can't prime the blaster in this condition. We're gonna pop this open. And uh, see what we all get inside. I actually really like uh, the Dauntless too. If you guys have ever seen that, it's kind of like this almost piratey pistol thing they've got going on. Um, if I ever see that, I'd probably get that as well. It just looks really cool. Is there another one back there? Do you ever change up your stairs for your unboxing? No. You've got I, like at least three, so. This is true. I've got at least four. Okay. I'm gonna say four. No, I have not changed the uh, sword that I have. Surprise! Right. He's got four swords. Oop, one more way down there. I probably will. You're right. I could probably uh, grab a different sword sometime. Maybe down in there. I think that's it. So it comes apart. Um, it comes apart, and you have to kind of put it all together. It looks like it's stuck right here. Is it supposed to be that way? Yeah, it's supposed to be that way because that's supposed to connect here. So I think I can figure this one out without instructions. We'll find out. Yep. Okay. So here, there's a little latch in there that kind of goes like in an L shape, and there's an L shape right here. So guess what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to try to hook that together. Lo and behold, it clicks. And then... Have you ever done that and it wasn't supposed to go there and yeah. it stuck forever? <laughs> no. I don't think I've ever had it stuck forever, but yes. And then this piece right here. So this is the elastic string. And this piece right here is uh, what pops into that hole right there. And it pops in in one way only, and I had it upside down. Uh, given the way these teeth look, 
it's a one-time fit. So if you wanted to paint or modify this, you should probably do that before putting it together. Because um, it'll be a pain in the butt to do otherwise. Yeah, so there it is. Um, why don't you go ahead and hold on to that while I grab the darts and the uh, other stuff. And it's got let like me know what you think. It has a little hole in here for your finger. Yep. So you can be a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> be a pirate. Princess pirate. That's what it looks like. There you go, Nerf. You need a pirate it, line. Well, it's got that kind of like 17... 18th century type like, coral design right. on the side. All I need is a powdered wig and I feel like <laughs> So, we've also got this metal charm. So it's not plastic. This is actually made of some kind of metal, light metal, but it is a metal. And oh, we have, good. right? I, I'll, I'll show you. So we've got like the Rebel one right there with my camera will focus on it. Well, it's, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the fortune charm, which is like a, a star is the fortune charm. And we've got like, like this little anchor piece here that goes into this loop piece here. Those would be the technical jewelry terms, I'm sure. And you kind of just... You're supposed to you're supposed to link it right yeah. here. So, I don't know, maybe if you just kind of want to like... Yeah. So, so it won't fall off your wrist? I have no idea what the function is for that. <laughs> it's, it's for the mystical part. So oh, this okay. probably it, won't fit on my wrist. It's imbued with magical powers to improve your luck and accuracy. Exactly. So your okay. fortune will increase. Do you want to try putting this on your wrist? Because it will not fit mine, I'm sure. It barely, it barely fits barely mine, fits and yours. I have really tiny wrists. So. so what do you think about that? How does it feel? It's very cute. It's All very right. cute. Uh, if you are... A man <laughs> probably will not fit you, unfortunately. It won't fit me. You'll probably have to give it to your niece. So. Right. Or your wife. I know. <laughs> it's like a birthday gift. Here, honey. Happy <laughs> anniversary. Your, your hobby. I'm over it. I'm <laughs> All right, so loading it was pretty pretty easy. You kind of just put it in one side or the other or both, and then kind of just manually rotate it inside. Manual rotation is pretty simple when there are no darts. It's actually kind of awkward when there are darts in there, um, just because there's nothing to kind of hook into other mm -hmm. than the dart. Um, but that's, you know, that's just, it is what it is. Um, so outside of that, you can actually also hook it to the blaster, so we can do that. It's got like a... I forgot what this is called like again, a T anchor piece right here, so you don't have to like. Oh, that thumb, thumb, thumb thing, yeah. Thumb, and I have super short nails, so it, it's really annoying when it's a thumb thing. Is it easy to take off? Just pull it off like that. Nice. Cool. Let's try to put it on the blaster. Do you want to try this? I think one goes in here and the other one puts there. Probably. Yes, yeah, so there's a little hook right here that you put the, the circle part in. in yeah, I'd say the same. There you go. And it fits and very nicely. Hold it. How does it feel in your hands? Does it feel good? I feel like a pirate. You feel like a pirate? Like is pirate. it good size? Um, actually, it is very comfortable to hold in my hand. It's a little heavy this way, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's nice. It's comforting. Nice. This, probably this little circle right uh -huh. here. Uh, it helps you anchor it here so it doesn't feel as heavy as it would if that circle oh, yeah. wasn't there. Okay. Yeah, for physics and stuff. For physics. Yep. For uh, my hands, um, the, the pinky kind of goes over the edge a little bit. Um, but it still has a full solid grip to it. It's just a little weird spot for the pinky. Um, the ring here uh, fits pretty... If it was any smaller, it would be pretty tight. <laughs> I, think, I think this is marketed towards, like, tweens. No, it's marketed towards 30-year-old males. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're thinking of coming up with a, a new series called uh, My Wife Cox and Nerf Blaster. <laughs> because she'll pick up some stuff that I have and go, I, yeah. I don't know how to use it. But this was pretty intuitive. So if you're looking to get this for your for your daughter or for your niece or something, it's I basically try to do intuitive. the same thing with things that don't move. And there you go. I'm very determined that they will move. Electronic blasters are hard, guys. Yeah, they are. Well, sometimes <laughs> I can't tell if it's electronic or not. I don't, I don't move. So we're going to go ahead and uh, try to give this a quick fire down right next to the camera. Hopefully it won't hit the camera. Twang. 
And then you kind of... It seemed like a very smooth release. I it didn't was. hear any springs or anything like that. There are that. no springs. It's just... Right. That. So, uh, that's kind of the interesting thing about um, blasters. So you've got, like, electronic so how does it blasters. actually, like, physically push the dart out with that? Yeah. There's this little latch right here, which I hope you guys can see on camera, too. That little latch right there. And this pulls the string back and rotates on the prime. And once it's there, it's kind of hooked in that catch. When you pull this to release it, what it's going to do is it's going to shove this dart down through this it's barrel. It's actually very effective without the string. Like, yeah. Or with, I'm sorry, without the spring. Without the spring, yeah. yeah. It's just completely string powered. I was and that's really pretty surprised if you feel that. I was, oh, you play a song with that. Okay. Um, I was very surprised it didn't flop over, you know. Right. The dart didn't flop down to the ground like we do sometimes. So. so to an extent, it actually does function kind of like a crossbow. Um, it's just that crossbows usually use the arms, not the string, as the main focal point of energy. Um, and it's really easy to modify stringers because you just kind of tighten this, and the tighter you make it, for example, if I did this, and I tightened it, all of a sudden, I'm getting much more power Woo! out of it. So, you want to try it a few times? You have to push it forward. Um, push it forward again. Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to tell you. You're supposed to figure it out now. <laughs> and then you pull it back. Um, I don't think you're supposed to pull it back. Yeah, you got to pull the string, oh, it's string true. back. Right. Um, just aim it to the left of the camera. Nice. My uh, finger was in the way <laughs> oh, okay. of this, so I, I don't know. It still hit what I wanted it to hit, so it was still accurate, but... Uh, okay. It was slightly irritating so like where to you... have a string hit because I was holding it like 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 this. Okay. So I normally hold it so I can align these two parts together. That's how I aim things. Gotcha. Make sure they're level. And I was so busy trying to aim that, as you can see, my sorry, as you can see, my finger was in the way. Yeah. So. Well, that's a good point. There's not really a place to. Uh... A really solid place to put your hand. There's no obvious hand guard. Yeah, um, that's the only thing that you can, you can kind of like push sure. right there. But or one-handed, I guess. Because if you hold it here, then you're holding the darts. So right. I guess you got to kind of. So we're gonna go ahead and do what we normally do here, and we're gonna shoot it at the uh, target and see just how accurate it is. Okay guys, so as always we've got our tech target on game three just to see what kind of scores we will get. And I've got this loaded up with six of the darts that it came with, which are basically the uh, elite style, um, uh, or they're the rebel colored elite darts. And I've also got six other darts, which are two of the X-Shot darts, two of the Busby darts, and two of the uh, Dart Zone darts. So these are all comparable dart arts to the Nerf brand. So we're going to go ahead and give that a shot. I'll fire the first six of these, um, and then do a volley of these. So here we go. We're going to test for accuracy from about 20 to 25 foot um, engagement range. Okay, so that was the six for the uh, darts that it came with. We're going to start with two of the X-Shot darts, followed by two Dart Zone darts, and lastly, two Busby darts. Okay, so that ends our accuracy test, so we'll go ahead and go back to the review. Okay, and we're back after the uh, firing test, and a um, couple of things to note. This thing does come off quite a bit. Uh, had it come off, and I eventually just took it off during the firing test. kind of just very easily slips out of the hooks that it's in. Um, so it ends up being more like this. <laughs> 
most of the time, um, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so it might serve better as a bracelet, although this looks pretty pretty nice to me. It's a cute bracelet, and it stays on as a bracelet. <laughs> yeah, it's just that this is way too open for this, um, way too easy for it to slip out. The other thing to note as well, um, I did have one issue with a dart misfiring, and I'm guessing it was just because the, the tip of the dart was a little bit more squished, the back end. So that's something to note. The, um, the dart quality might make a big difference on that. The other part is there is a dart sensor in here so that if you were to prime it, you cannot you cannot fire it. Yeah, so that's uh, those are the only other things that I wanted to note. Um, have anything to say about whether what good or bad about it? Um, I think the only thing that I don't like about it mm -hmm. is that it's heavy and it's not. Okay. So, any other blaster that you have? Okay. Pistol size, you mean? Like this. I mean, it's pretty balanced. balanced. Yeah. Yeah, so this, I would have trouble holding it like this. I'd have to kind of, you know. Fine. And there's really no place to put my hand either. Right. Maybe in the front. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I mean, the trim is really cute on it. And, you know, the design, I think, would appeal. Uh, is more feminine appeal to it. I don't know. I like the design. Feminine or not, I really like that. Design. You know what? If you kind of took off, like, like it, it does look very regal. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the feeling that I get. So, uh, yeah. It shoots um, very nice. It does, actually. It's very smooth. It doesn't have that kind of kick back or weird, like, buzzing to it. It's just, just it's nice, clean. Right. And quiet. Yeah, it's uh, actually pretty, pretty quiet and pretty. Like when I first fired, it was like, Play. it was pretty quiet. For me, the accuracy was kind of wonky just because I couldn't quite gauge what was level with it because of this blocking my view. Um, but the feel of it is actually pretty nice. I actually like this grip handle a lot. It's not too thick. Mm -hmm. um, the nice. It could be a little bit longer, but again, I'm not the target market. Uh, and I really overall like the design aesthetics. I think that's what I really appreciate about this I think that's the line. real appeal is the aesthetics. It yeah. has the charm bracelet. It's got the really pretty um, kind of floral. I'm going to show you guys. This is what we're talking about here. So this is the blaster itself. And these are the accent points to it. And uh, those are actually the things I really like about this line as a whole, for the accent pieces. Um, so it's war practicality. It's not holsterable really well, so you'd have to kind of sling it. Um, potential sling points here. But because of the bow arms, it's not really easy to holster this. So you'd have to kind of use this as a sling point for it to kind of just be dangling on the side. I guess you could use these as sling points as well. Um, but it's not very convenient to holster this. It's not good enough to be a primary weapon. And it's six dart capacity where you only have access to two at a time. And you do have to rotate it, so reloading is going to take some time. So this is not a war practical piece. This could be more of like a uh, cosplay piece, perhaps, if you repainted it to it look would more... Great. Yeah. Would be a great cosplay piece. Right, if Especially you repainted it. Especially because of the... Look at the box. It's, uh, steampunk. Right. Yeah. So there's steampunk everything in cosplay. Exactly. So this shit, would be easy, so. easy to use for cosplay. Cool. I'm going to steal this charm. <laughs> yes, you may. Um, so that's the Fair Fortune Blaster. I will try to find a link to buy this blaster and put it in the description box below. If you have other questions um, about this line or about this blaster in particular, let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I will also be linking uh, up over here somewhere a link to my 100th subscriber um, celebration and giveaway video. So if you haven't checked that out, you should. Um, and join in on the contest. Contest ends September 18th. And all you got to do is tell me what your favorite uh, modification is, whether it's yours or somebody else's. Um, that being said, that's all we got for you. And uh, this is Alan and Heather from OC Nerf. Mm -hmm. We'll catch you guys later and Nerf on. <laughs>